Hello and welcome to another episode of Standing Stanley Tucci. I am Hannah. I am David and uh, we're still watching every single thing that Stanley Tucci has been in. This is his first children's movie role. Yes. Uh, unless you count Men of Respect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, this is Beethoven 1992 uh, and it's kind of weird that this came out the same year as Prelude to a Kiss and In the Soup. Very different <laughs> films all. Right. It's, you know, more of like, a, you know, a philosophical sort of art film and then more of an indie Sundance type film and then Beethoven to, you know, really make some money, I guess. Yeah. It's a it's a Disney film, right? Uh, I It certainly was played on Disney Channel a lot. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, or or even more so the sequel Beethoven's Second which Tucci does not appear in I I gets... vividly remember advertising for Beethoven's Fifth right so they did many more of these I don't know how many actors are maintained but the 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 premise of this film was to try and make this dog actor a star in the you know vein of Rin Tin Tin or Lassie you know all mm-hmm. the famous dog stars uh, and just be like, what about what about Beethoven, man? We got we got a Saint Bernard, the dude that does tricks. What else I, do you need? I forget. Does Air Bud the ser- the Air Bud series come after this or before it? Uh, I mean, they may as well be considered contemporaneous. Like, I'm sure there was some overlap between the first Air Bud and the last Beethoven. Sure. Um, Basically, I just feel like the 90s were this time where, you know, if you went to a studio and pitched, it's an animal doing things. Goofy things. Not even necessarily goofy things, just things. Fair enough. Uh, then that would be the pitch for the movie. Most Valuable yeah. Primate, uh, 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 101 Dalmatians, which we just talked about last week for our Cruella <laughs> episode. Um, which was also written by John Hughes, well, that who was, wrote the screenplay for this this movie. That was two thousands, and we're still nineties here. But um, Homeward Bound, the Homeward Bound series, is very nineties. True, true. I loved those. Yeah, it's just you know there was a period of time in our childhoods uh, where there was nothing but animal movies, and they would they would all sort of run through like the same sort of similar tropes. Like there'd be one sort of animal hating character. There'd be some sort of kidnapping character or like an original owner who was a bad person, like Airbud's evil yeah. clown. But uh, <laughs> but this one, you know, it's it's we got the two. He's our baddie. He's our bumbling goon uh, serving an evil veterinarian yeah. with his best friend Oliver Platt. Yes, yes, who apparently they were friends uh, before filming and were excited to to get to work together. Uh, in yeah, interestingly way. enough, like he he was just asked about Beethoven uh, Tucci in a recent interview when talking about the witches because, you know, that's his most recent children's film. And then we have mm-hmm. his his first foray into youth entertainment uh, <laughs> you know so he was you know he just kept talking about how how important it is in a kid's movie to you know to find the right tone and right. Uh, and how important it was that he he was having a lo- great old time with his friend Oliver Platt which they would uh but I mean on to to star in more films together I mean that's exactly what I want out of a Beethoven movie though you know like I don't want it to be like art I want it to be hammed up to the nth degree yeah. and just like Whimsical. over the top yeah you know we need goons we need you know our home alone type antics right. you know people getting bit in the crotch you know I mean all those classic yeah. 90s things that you know don't really exist in movies anymore because That's they're the... all animated <laughs> it's so interesting because this movie is so aggressively 90s and like so aggressively like suburban white like middle right. class upper middle class family like it's not even like one of those movies that really like addresses those like elements of it like the facade of you know trying to keep up appearances keep up right. the joneses kind of thing it's just sort of taken for granted that uh this family uh you know the, the... a wealthy white family must be in want of a dog <laughs> right 
uh, the, the the kids want the dog, but the parent, the dad doesn't want the dog ah. because it will ruin his perfect house and his perfect life that he's established. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's like basically the story, except for there's these goons who inexplicably want to kidnap dogs to test ammunition on them <laughs> and like weird chemicals it's never super defined what it is they're right. actually well, I, the one that they, like they say for sure is that they want to like put a bullet in the brain of a saint bernard to test if the bullet will puncture a skull of about human size which is so stupid it's such a not real crime that it just it makes me it makes me smile <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's very dumb and very bad, and it's great. I guess he just thought it would be too derivative to say that they want the skins for fur or something, <laughs> or or, they or the they're like for food for somebody, or I don't know, like what's another good reason you could want? It's like dogs? another crime. Maybe you, you know? just hate dogs. Maybe right. you maybe don't. He's a sadist and just likes killing big maybe, fuzzy animals. Maybe Dalmatians pushed his mom off a cliff and he's got maybe, an axe yes, to grind. Maybe it's a trauma based <laughs> revenge story. What's yeah, his or, village in? <laughs> or, or what about using the one that they actually use in Cruella? Maybe the dog ate a precious gemstone and they want to cut it out of him, you know? Right, but I feel like that's a common one. In, super in common, but movies. they didn't want to be derivative. They wanted to say, we're, we're pushing the edge here. All right, Tucci, he's going to be breaking into random pet stores, just stealing hundreds of, of helpless puppies because that's what the veterinarian, the evil veterinarian wants. Of course. And it's like so strange because it's just like fear mongering to that like same white middle class audience where it's like your vet could be a secret, like a secret dog never dog dog never murder. Like ah <laughs> Yeah. But that's that's how it opens. It opens immediately yes. with with the Tooch, and I love that. I, it makes our job easier because we can identify him immediately. We know his role in the story immediately. Perfect. Uh, and we know what his persona is. And how would you describe his persona in this one? Is he? It's like a he sort of, of henchman. he's sort of the slightly more competent henchman. But yeah. like still very much bumbling and like goofy and uh, you know, gets gets tricked a lot and oh oops, the dog is smarter than him and he gets his <laughs> come up at in the end. Yeah. And, and his all that his good character's stuff. name is Vernon and okay. uh, the the Oliver Platt sidekick is uh, Harvey, I think. Sure. Does that sound right? They don't have particularly identifiable uh, names. <laughs> like, that's not really relevant to who they are. Right. But I thought it was interesting that they both kind of have, like, speech impediments. But, like, Oliver Platt is doing, like, a full, like, Fulvester the Cat kind of, uh, you know, uh, is he? speech impediment. Yeah. Oliver Platt is. And then, okay. you know, Stanley Tucci, he's doing more of just like, uh, you know, extremely New York, first of all, in LA for some reason. I don't know, you know, how he got to California. I mean, it happens. You get It happens. Uh, you just rehoused. move out there to be a dog napper. <laughs> you go where I'm the money takes it. you. Um, but he also kind of like has uh, sort of his S's, you know, they're a little uh, sharp, the S's. Yeah, you know? it's it's an interesting voice. I don't know if it's a necessarily like trying to be a speech impediment. But no, not I guess not really. But he's just he's playing it. First of all, he may have fake teeth in. He definitely has. If he doesn't have fake teeth, he has like his teeth are painted yellow or something to probably. make him look more grody and slimy, greasy. Yeah. Um, you know his his hair is definitely receding at a steady rate at this point. Yes. So I think part of the reason he's taking this role is because his you know his agent probably said something along the lines of you need to show some range because you're not going to be a leading man for for very long yeah uh little did that agent know how 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 many leading roles he would get in the future wow bless him bless the truth <laughs> but but yeah like i think i think that this was a good career move i think it showed some you know some range that probably helped him land roles in the future in comedies 
which he hadn't done too many comedies up until this point uh, mm-hmm. outside of like more romantic comedies or like the indie stuff you know like and fear anxiety stuff. depression right uh and and it showed that he could he could do he could do child friendly you know he didn't yes. have to be only in mob movies yeah uh and you would see some of this performance sort of maybe bleed over into uh his performance on percy jackson 2 or maybe his performance in the muppets most wanted where he has a walk-on <laughs> cameo you know i think you uh-huh. can see sort of this role and this type of performance like bleeding over into those those later roles i would believe you i have not yet had the pleasure of viewing these so uh i can't wait till we get there um and then any classic tucci mannerisms that you uh noticed there is some lip biting at the very beginning a lot of absolutely some lip biting and then at the end a lot of underbiting yeah a lot of showing his teeth to show that he's a bad guy and it's great. I, I, I love that, you know, we've cataloged all of these yeah, mannerisms. Yeah. But you've got one. If anyone's watching the video podcast right now, you can see in Hannah's background that he has whipped out a comb. And oh, it's I feel the comb. like he must have brought this to set himself. I, I can't imagine that a director said, here, here's a comb, do some comb work. Because right. it's such a by the numbers like movie that nobody's like, paying attention enough to hand him a comb no brought that comb he started doing this in some of the like outtakes and they were like all right that's good keep i it. like it yeah it's greasy it's slimy it's, <laughs> yeah, but it also shows that you're like the neat freak of the two of them you're right the more classy head yeah you know you're you're having a, a good time looking good <laughs> right you're the one wearing a tie and oliver platt's got his uh his whole shirt unbuttoned you know collars yeah, not done all like the way janitor's, up uh, uniform or what do you call it a onesie yeah uniform yeah <laughs> Uh, so, you know, there's a definitely a huge Tucci gap in this movie where, you know, they, they show up very early on in the beginning and then you don't see him again for a very long time, pretty much until the kidnapping yes. uh, starts up again an hour into the movie. Yeah, uh, but he bookends it like very well. You know, you get yeah. a lot of Tucci at the beginning and you get a bunch of Tucci at the end. It, it works. Um, and... <laughs> in the in the meanwhile in the like the plot of the movie you could charitably say uh (laughs) it's mainly about the dad played by charles grodin um just sort of getting (laughs) exaggeratedly mad at this dog for doing normal dog things and then stewing like the angry sitcom scream like you know Oh, like if he's if you were yelling at Dennis the Menace or Alvin right. in the Chipmunks, it would like, be just as much at home. Yeah, absolutely. Beethoven. <laughs> um, yeah, but Beethoven was originally a puppy kidnapped by the Tooch. Then he escapes with like a Jack Russell Terrier friend, mm-hmm. uh, and they go running through the streets, and then Beethoven just kind of wanders into uh, Charles Grodin's family's home. Yeah. Uh, which is this big, like, mansion. Um, it is, like, <laughs> even, f- even for, like, upper middle class, like, homes on TV and movie, this is a big, nice right. home. <laughs> which is weird considering his business is selling novelty air fresheners yeah it's very strange i guess it's a booming business question mark right (laughs) but it's never like established that they're having like money problems it's just like there's a big deal that could make them a lot more money right which is like demand more work and for his wife to go back to work uh, and she doesn't want to bonnie hunt and uh she she's like I guess used to be his secretary or something because she works for the same company. Right, like they maybe work they at co-own the... it or right. I don't know. And she's kind of like, I don't need it. It's fine. I kind of want to stay home with the kids. I right. think we're because okay. Because the kids are having problems, Hannah. They're, they are they're so kids. many problems. The well, I mean, not really. the The oldest <laughs> daughter is like 
you know, she's got a crush on a boy. Oh, oh but she, he, he walks right past her uh, when she says, hey, shirtless basketball boy, uh, come talk to me. The other two uh, kids have real problems. One, the, the son is being bullied, which right. sucks. Right. Uh, and the youngest daughter, I mean, almost she, she doesn't really have pool. problems, but she just almost drowns. <laughs> And the joke is just that Beethoven solves all of their problems and is sort of a surrogate parent to these he, kids when their dad is just like, you know, this really distant businessman yeah. who doesn't pay attention to anything that they're going through or know yeah. anything about their lives. Yeah. But here's the thing. The dad never finds out that the dog was like helping his children and then like no. comes to love the dog because of that. He's just like, oh, wait, I don't actually just don't want to like put you down and kill you. That seems like a lot, <laughs> even though I kind of hate you. Oh, well, man. no, it's before that, like the peak of his anger is when he says, my kids love you more than they love me. It's, <laughs> it's, he it's actually the idea of them. Beethoven as this like parental like, cuckold cuck. for yeah. him, like take, coming in and taking his family away from him and ruining his home. Uh, it's, it's a strange sort of metaphor uh, that's built out of that yeah. narrative, uh, especially the part where the dog climbs into bed with him and licks his ear and that's the last straw because it turns him on too much uh, yeah he thinks yeah. it's his wife but really it's the dog right it's a joke that's been done in, in almost every dog thing movie. that has a dog yes <laughs> for sure so you know of note i i don't know if they're your whom's whom's we also but my whom's we also for this week is uh david duchovny uh, yeah, who shows up in this movie fame. weird random part in this movie <laughs> yeah he plays brad the scheming guys who want to invest but also take over the air freshener business uh along with um i forget the actress's name but she's deborah from everyone loves Ray. everybody loves raymond yeah <laughs> and she's also the mom in the middle now so beloved sitcom mom playing like a a business lady who hates children right um but loves dogs because they're so much more so, obedient than children very cruella very uh proto glenn close cruella she has no use for babies um <laughs> i mean i feel like you know that's a classic 90s villain the the working absolutely. woman who doesn't yeah. want to have a family <laughs> right yeah they're just committed to each other and to the business of scamming air freshener people out of their business uh, Question mark. fortunately Beethoven overhears their scheme somehow understands it and decides to drag them down the sidewalk on on his leash yeah and ruin the deal thwarting the deal and their plans yeah. somehow <laughs> shrug question mark right but, for, but from you know charles grodin's perspective he's ruined a deal that could have made them a lot more money so it's like it adds to the tension Ugh. Um, so this was this was a uh, six years before the x-files um yeah is when so when Beethoven happened. Himself. yeah but uh duchovny does a great job of being just like a real douchebag he's got like a little yeah. exercise ball uh that he just squeezes the whole time yeah. and he's very rude to the children you yeah know, he, he tells them like you're all very annoying and demanding please leave <laughs> <laughs> for sure uh, but that wasn't my uh yeah. my my standing uh my uh my whomst. All, we, whomst we also um mine was a very very blink and you miss it part i think you literally could have blinked and missed it okay uh, <laughs> If you are watching the movie, the first scene where the son, Ted, is g getting on the school bus, mm -hmm. he's hiding behind some bushes so he doesn't have to interact with some boys who he thinks might bully him. Mm -hmm. And the three of them are just kind of standing and they're just in one shot. And then they get on a bus and then you never see those three characters again. On the far right of that screen, the first ever film role of Joseph Gordon-Levitt. The first ever? <laughs> that was his first feature film role. Wait, um, I want to change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted that to be a big surprise. So yeah, that's little JGL, even before uh, third, you know, third <sighs> rock from the sun. 
which is you know where he became a real star uh, but Ugh. i absolutely adore joseph gordon levitt and Le all of his bizarre filmography uh in so his early strange. years and his you know and his, his current his years movies. yes it's great. it's still bizarre <laughs> he makes <laughs> he chooses strange scripts Yes, um, you know, I definitely liked Looper probably more than most people. <laughs> I enjoyed Looper as well, but it's weird. <laughs> it's bizarre. Uh, but yeah, he's he's my homes to we also for this week. That's excellent. Although I like David Duchovny as well. And, yeah. Uh, you know, if I had watched Everybody Loves Raymond, I probably would like Deborah. Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the middle, I guess. Or the, I'm the I'm never gonna watch the middle. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh God. I mean, I feel like we've hit most of the major plot points. You know, the dog saves the youngest daughter from drowning at a, a neglectful neighbor's house, and the mom is like, "See, this is why we can't have a babysitter." And <laughs> you know, I can't go back to work because my kid will drown in a pool. Uh. Don't it's a classic a white works. person middle class anxiety um, yeah you know which is why yeah. most people who made enough money you know even if they were working women you know <laughs> ended up staying home raising kids and then maybe going back to work once the kids are old enough it's just this right. big anxiety of the 90s yeah who's watching your kids are they well and i mean <laughs> i mean i think after the 80s for sure and then also you know just like all the latchkey kids and like i don't want to raise my kids as a latchkey child you know exactly so um i think i want to say that i think charles grodin is perhaps the most distracting thing about this movie like not even like all the dog scenes he's He's not a good actor he doesn't deliver like the you know the comic sort of side of it you know he's not dave no. from alvin and the chipmunks you know he's he's just sort of like a rage monster and but like he's just he's just so hateful of this dog <laughs> for no reason he's so hateful he's just kind of unlikable and i feel like all of his facial expressions are like off by like half an emotion you know yeah. like i feel like he's always like kind of smiling like at the end when they have to like take beethoven in to get euthanized and he's just like I love you, buddy. And he's like kind of smiling. And you're like, right. I know you're trying to go for like bittersweet and sad and heartfelt, but like it is not coming out at all. (laughs) Yeah, he's got a bit where he's like, you know, he's taking him to be euthanized because the vet has pretended to be bit on the arm uh, in order to justify taking this dog so that he can put a bullet in its brain as i previously stated again just steal the dog it can't be that hard (laughs) um but instead he 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 has it sent sent to be euthanized yeah Uh, and so you know grodin is is driving him and he's like you know my my dad killed my dog too (laughs) and i never forgave him for that Anyway, going to keep uh, <laughs> killing this dog. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it's so strange. And then there's like an action sequence at the end where they follow the vet to the second location where they're keeping Beethoven and the other dogs. Right, because uh, the police won't, would never intervene in such a situation. Right, of course. <laughs> uh, well, no, they call the police and the police are like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's what Not I'm saying. somebody else, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So in this world, it's a world where police would never show up to help somebody who says their dog's been kidnapped by, you know, a uh, vet who lied vet. about being bit. <laughs> right. And like, they I'm sure... wouldn't even sure... do an investigation. It just, just leave it. Well, you know, they'll investigate it tomorrow, but they need it um, solved now, Damon, now. So the dad gets his hero moment where he, uh, you know, Beethoven's about to get got by the <laughs> scientist, and then he falls through the ceiling onto Stanley Tucci and Oliver Platt and uh, <laughs> saves the day. Yep. So they get knocked out, and you think they're pretty much done. And then uh, for some reason the son starts driving the car and he drives it, crashes into the building and then launches like 16 syringes full of chemical liquids 
into the vet, which just kind of knocks him out. Like, right. it doesn't kill him. It just sort of... It does just look like he got knocked out, but it, it really seems like he's dead. You know, with <laughs> just like these 16 right. needles Well, the next we hear of him, it's he's on a newspaper and it says yeah. indicted. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think they would say indicted if he was dead from No, I injection. I know that he doesn't die, but I'm just saying it really looks like he right. should have died. But Tucci doesn't die there. He he's like That's crawling true. away That's in a very true. undignified fashion. Uh but then yeah. who let the dogs out? Uh <laughs> but uh all of the 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 Newton family. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, they get to say sick 'em boys. And yeah. the dogs chase after them. And uh, then we we get to David, your scene. Uh, that's your background. <laughs> they, right. they well, think they, they... They're running and then they like knock over a cabbage cart. And I'm just thinking, my cabbages. My cabbages. <laughs> um, and then they, they run to a pound uh, or, or to a junkyard, sorry. Mm-hmm. And they climb over the junkyard fence and they're like, ha ha, we did it. We got away from you stupid dogs. And they're like literally shaking their butts in the dog's faces. Right. And like taunting them. And then from behind, a couple of junkyard Dobermans just sort of crawl out. And then they're like, ah! They scream and then the camera zooms right in on them and then it blurs and then, you know we assume that they're in pain and Mm -hmm. suffer their just rewards for being dog nappers. Yep. Yep. And well, they, they too are indicted according to the news broadcast at the end because they, yeah, the family gets interviewed and uh, you know, the dad gets asked if he's always been such a dog lover and uh, he's like, well, not, not as much before as now. And then we zoom out and see that the parents are going to bed with all of the dogs in the bedroom. It's They've the got, same ending as 101 Dalmatians. Yeah. It's literally just the same movie. <laughs> like it's crazy. It's just crazy how how similar these movies are. Like yeah. it must have been that somebody like looked at this script and was like, is this just 101 Dalmatians, John? And then John Hughes was like, it is. Let's talk to Disney. Maybe we'll just adapt that. I guess yeah. we need some like CGI for the dogs. We'll see if they can do that in a couple of years. There we go. We, they, you got there. <laughs> uh, anything else to say about Tucci's performance here? Uh, I when think he it's screams fine. like a little girl, I think I think that works very well. He does a great little girl scream. Uh, he's very fun to watch. You know, like I said, he, he plays a good goon. He's a great goon. Uh, in the in the first scene, I don't think I mentioned. He's uh, smoking a, a cig, and that's rare for a kid's movie nowadays, obviously. Yeah. But back then, not quite so rare. But he's smoking a cig, and then he sort of casually blows on, like, a laser tripwire. Oh, yeah. And then just kind of flicks the cigarette out the door. Like, he's very smooth, even when he's playing a clumsy, you know, uh, stupid henchman. Right. Like, he got hired for a reason, but, you know, yeah. he he's not going to keep this job for long. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's, that's Tooch. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's Beethoven's first. Yep. And it would go on to sell a million copies of straight to Woo! DVD VHS Beethoven Nonsense. Movies. Uh, yeah. Tell us what your favorite Beethoven movie is. Uh, tweet at us at Talking Trope or comment wherever yeah, you see this cast. Let us know if cast. you want us to do a, a full Talking Tropes on animal movies of the we 90s. Might need, of the 90s, good, because we really might need to narrow <laughs> that one down. Um, right. Dr. Doom or, or just do a, a series on like the Beethovens and the Air Buds of, of the 90s. Yeah, just dog movies. Uh, so that's Beethoven. If you guys are nostalgic for it, you know, uh, we respect you, but uh, we <laughs> respectfully disagree and we think it's a bad movie. <laughs> oh, it's a bad movie, but it's very enjoyable. Would watch again. 10 out of 10 on the watchability just, scale. Just for, you know, Charles Grodin getting slimed or oh, yeah. splattered with mud and other liquids. I mean, I, I will say we sort of uh, jumped over it, but there is like a montage of where, you know, the dog just does a bunch of like dirty stuff and annoying yeah. stuff around the house and the dad yeah. freaks out. And I'm pretty sure that was what they had going into this. And we're like, let's, 
let's build a movie around this <laughs> you know this like I mean, it's a, four minute it's sequence. a good trailer I, it just it doesn't make for really like a movie with a plot no it's not a movie it's a sketch <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh we'll talk to you later and and see what stan we're gonna tooch what tooch we're gonna stand next time you know it uh, bye-bye bye